Now, from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Medical Mondays. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Medical Monday. I'm Carrie Sharp, joined by a guest that you've seen before, Dr. Dan Wonder, an interventional radiologist. Dr. Wonder, thank you for being back with us. Thank you for it having me. Great to see you again. We have a different topic this time because you do many things in your office. Today, we're going to be talking about kyphoplasty. I had to read up on this one. It's a big name that people may not be familiar with for something that is really common. Can you fill me in? Yeah, it's, it is relatively common, especially in the elderly population, mostly elderly white females. Mm. Um, kyphoplasty is a procedure that was developed to fix broken bones in the back in a minimally invasive fashion. And we do it as an outpatient quite frequently. We also perform it in the hospital, but a lot of times in the outpatient setting. Now, when you say broken back, that sounds very traumatic. It sounds like a huge pain. Not necessarily. It is a huge pain. Mm -hmm. um, you are, I mean, most of the people that show up have a lot of pain that are referred to us have a lot of pain in their back. It's very point tender, you know, right in the midline of the back, very debilitating. I mean, they have a hard time putting on their clothes. They can't cook, they can't wash, they can't, you know, do hygiene, a lot of things without help like that. Um, and and we can actually take that pain away inside of a couple of hours um, by, by basically fixing that broken bone in the middle of their back. Which is amazing. If you have a question about this, if you suffer from back pain and say, do you think this is what I have? What would you do for it? Go ahead and give us a call. The number is right there along the bottom of the screen. 737 plus is the number to call. And uh, Dr. Wonder here will answer your questions as best that he can, not seeing you in the office, but uh, we answered a lot of questions last time around. So go ahead and give us a call. We'll get those lined up. In the meantime, I wanna talk more about this kyphoplasty. Can you explain exactly what it is? What kind of surgical procedure is it? It is, it's a minimally invasive procedure where we use x-ray guidance. Mm -hmm. We take a, we get, first we get a patient, we get them, you know, prepped the correct way, positioned correctly, and we use x-ray guidance after they're sedated to place two hollow needles into their, the bone in their back that's broken. And once we get the needles positioned appropriately with x-ray guidance in multiple views, then we can use, we put balloons down through those hollow needles to take that bone that's supposed to be square, mm -hmm. but when it's fractured, it goes from square to, to triangular. We try to lift it up some with those balloons, try to get some of that height back. It's hard to do, but you can get some of it back. And once we get that back, then what we do is we slowly place a, a special bone cement hmm. into that space. It's kind of the consistency of like, you know, Play-Doh, you know, okay. kind of toothpaste Play-Doh and we slowly put it in under x-ray guidance to glue all those broken pieces together. Wow. And once they're glued together, that, that bone cement sets in about 10 minutes or so, all those broken pieces quit moving. And once they quit moving, you quit having pain. And that's really the secret to the whole thing, quite honestly. I mean, people can come in, you get the procedure done, and I mean, 15 minutes actual procedure time, but you know, they're there for you know an hour before, an hour after for recovery. And when they wake up, I mean, 90 plus percent of that time, their pain in their back is gone. So if they, you know, when they come in, they can hardly walk. They walk out and they want to hug you and kiss yeah. you because they you don't hurt anymore. You said it is. I mean, not to toot your own horn, but you said it's pretty miraculous from a doctor's point of view to see someone who c is coming in in such pain to be able to walk out just a few hours later. Oh yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, it's very very gratifying. Wow. There's no question about it. Now you put this glue in, it hardens up, and then you draw the balloon back out and the glue should be there, should be set, and it keeps that, gets that bone back to where it was, and it just lasts like that for how long? Oh, forever. Forever. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah the, it's always it's in there forever. And it's actually as hard, at least as hard, if not harder than bone. And, and you know, that's, that's the tricky part because the bones are all kind of, I mean, I mean, most people are, that we do this for are very brittle or soft, sure. they're osteoporotic. Because you're talking about the vertebrae, right? Yes, the vertebrae, yep, that hold up your spine. Mm -hmm. And, and typically most of them you do in the mid in the mid back region kind of by the shoulder blades a little bit below and then in the upper to l mid lower back those are kind of some fulcrum points of where there's stresses and you have typical fractures but uh, the the thing that we have to that I always work on with patients is not only just fixing their pain but is is taking them and trying to get them on the right path to build their bone density back up to help solidify those other bones mm -hmm. in a natural process so that they have less chance of having another fracture, which is counterintuitive to a business model, but right. it's the right thing for the patient. So 
Well, sure. And let's talk about bone fractures. How do they typically happen? Is it a traumatic event like a car wreck? Or is it the bone density issue? How do they come about? The vast majority of them are the bone density issue. Uh, like I said, that's why most of my patients are elderly women from mm -hmm. 75 to 95. Mm. Um, there's some men in there, um, but a lot of them are women. Uh, and the Caucasians have more, are more likely to have osteoporosis, so that's why they're usually white. Um, but the bone, you know, over time just gets, you know, less and less dense. And then the fractures occur with minimal exertion. I mean, I've got stories from reaching for the shower handle, lifting a can You're of soup, kidding. putting on my pants, you know, um, getting up from the couch. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, it doesn't take any exertion. Those bones are so soft. And, and so brittle, you know, they can just crack like that, and they cause extreme pain when they crack. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Is that pain immediate? I mean, do you know right in that instant you have done something? Oh, yeah. Pati the patients will tell you, I heard a pop in my back. Oh. And then they know, especially if they've had one before, they really know. Um, you know, and the, the, you have to think that the bone that we're talking about is kind of like a sponge. If you take a sponge, you know, let's say you dip it in chocolate and cover it up. Okay. That's kind of what a bone in your back looks like, oh. okay, a vertebral body. So the, mi the middle part there that's the inside of the sponge is what we call trabecula, and that's mm -hmm. where you know, blood is made in there, bone marrow. Um, and so that's what cracks first when you, when you really crack your back for the most part. Those little spicules in there, mm -hmm. they crack first. And then, and then so that when, the, when you go to the doctor and you have back pain, and they take an x-ray, first it looks fine because the bone hasn't collapsed yet. Ah. It's broken inside, yeah. but it's not, the shell hasn't collapsed yet. So it's like when they blow up a building on TV, I always like to tell patients, you know, you got this building that blows up and it all falls inward. Right. Well, the inside's blowing up first, the outside hasn't really collapsed yet. How long does yet. that take? About two weeks, two to three ah, weeks. Okay. So that's why it takes a while for the patient to get to you usually. Yeah. Because they go to see the doctor, their primary care doctor, they have mm -hmm. back pain. Lots of people have back pain. Mm -hmm. So they get treated conservatively as they should. And they come back. And they may have an x ray, but you know, it looks normal. They come back two weeks, still having back pain. They may or may not get an x ray. That may show something, hard to mm -hmm. say. X rays are good, but they're not real sensitive, especially in an osteoporotic person. Um, an MRI or less likely perform, but a nuclear medicine bone scan, those are two ways that you can see fractures like the minute they happen, especially it, MRI. Because of this not being visible immediately and having to maybe go to your primary care physician, which deals with a gamut of issues, is this easily missed? It's, well, I shouldn't say missed, but well, overlooked, yeah. yeah. I mean, because there's so many people with back pain from the disc that are worn out, mm -hmm. from the arthritis, from pinched nerves, all these things, just muscle pain. So there's a lot of reasons. And I mean, <clears throat> you know, primary care doc just can't order an MRI on everybody right off sure. the bat. I mean, no, you wouldn't want to do that, it's a lot of money. Um, but that's why they, you know, a lot of them do get overlooked. And some people just think, it's kind of like with the pad we talked about mm -hmm. last time, the arterial disease. I'm just getting older and my back hurts. Yeah. And there's, I mean, Back fractures are tremendously underdiagnosed. Like only 30% of them are diagnosed. Wow. So there's all these people, you know, that have fractures of their back that are just think that that you know that's it's just That's the way normal. they have to live. And yeah. you see them at the grocery store. You sure do. Pushing the cart, mm -hmm. looking straight down at the floor, and their backs all humped over. Those people have had fractures over the years. Maybe not big ones, but little ones at multiple levels. So they just change the curvature of their back, mm -hmm. and now it's all humped. Yeah. And those are the kind of people, if you can get to them, I mean, you can't really fix that. Mm -hmm. But you, you get to people early on, then you can maybe if have you can a better recognize chance. It. Okay, I mentioned that we are going to take your phone calls. The more people that call in, the more phone calls we will answer. I promise that we will get to them. We have Michael on the line. Michael, you're our first caller tonight. Good evening. What's your question? Yes. Can you hear me? I sure can, loud and clear. Well, I had a question. I'm calling out of uh, Humphrey County down here. Mm -hmm. I broke my back about... 13, 14 months ago, and it was honestly, it wasn't my fault. I'm still in a lawsuit battle over it. Uh, they was serving a warrant on me, the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. They slammed me into the front door there of the uh, trailer, and I broke two vertebrae. Ooh. And I'm wondering if, uh, if, if this seller can, you know, weld them back together and help me out. 
All right, well, let's talk about this procedure again. Go ahead and listen to your TV. I'm going to put you on hold, Michael, so you can listen. It's not really a welding at all, because some people might think that put some screws in it, straighten me out, we'll all be fine. That's yeah. not it. No, it's not like that. It's, uh, but it, it, is, it is construction work, because it's cementing, <laughs> so. <laughs> but uh, usually a kyphoplasty, I mean, most, most fractures of the back will heal in somewhere between four and six months in the average person. Okay. In a younger person, they'll heal faster than an older person with better bone, you know, with, uh, with bone density that's different. So, you know, if, in, and what happens is that they progressively get less painful mm -hmm. if you don't do anything, um, except maybe take pain medicines or put a brace on your body, which is hard to wear, but it happens a lot. I mean, people just, it's a way to, it's a way to treat them. Um, so, you know, the, in, in some cases though, in six months out, you know, seven months out, mm -hmm. people could still have some pain, and it may or may not be associated with the fracture. Now, you know, chronic, you don't treat chronic fractures. People that have a fracture and they, you know, they heal up, and the best way to know is with like an MRI mm -hmm. or a bone scan, and you'll see a certain amount of signal on the MRI or activity on the bone scan. They'll tell you that there's bone remodeling going on or edema. If you see that on one of those studies, even on a six or eight month or you know thirteen month fracture, and he has pain there, it may be an indication, maybe an indication to fix it. But most of the time, someone that's had something as long as he has has healed this fracture, and now he most likely, and again, most likely has probably has arthritis that's ah. affecting things, not so much as the fracture. It's just you know without advanced imaging, you don't right. really know for sure. If you have arthritis, is that one of those things where you're like, well, got to deal with it, or are there ways to, to alternatively deal with that? It, again, it depends on really what it is. I mean, he could have had, you know, when he fractured these, he could have got some disc herniations, mm -hmm. and that could be causing the pain, and that could be dealt with several ways, surgically, non-surgically, as has been talked about before. Um, yeah, arthritis that we can do injections for arthritis mm -hmm. to help it but that's you know that's just it, you know it's not it's not really fixable. solving anything no yeah. it's just kind of putting a band-aid on it most gotcha. of the time but it helps people so okay Michael thank you for calling in sorry you're still dealing with pain we're gonna take a quick break if you have question about back pain or kyphoplasty this is your hour to call in talk to dr. wonder we'll be right back Whether a house is new or whether a house is 20 years old, we can go in and we can find debris in the lines. Mr. Bees is about doing duct cleaning the best that we can do it and better than anybody else in the industry. That's what I personally stand behind and guarantee. We never make a claim that we're going to help your health. That's just something we don't do. But again, I personally believe that if I put you in a cleaner environment, it's got to have a positive impact on you. And we literally cut a hole into the main line. That's the main artery, just like a tree trunk. And we attach a HEPA vacuum system to it. All right. When we do that and turn it on, it causes a negative airflow. As that machine's sucking everything backwards, we go to each line and we'll brush it, and then we air sweep it down to the trunk line. So we've taken everything back to that negative airflow. So again, whether it's upstairs or downstairs, you saw that everything is being brushed and air swept to the trunk line, not bringing it back into your breathing atmosphere. What makes my home need an air duct cleaning? You have to make that decision. It's your environment. So if you have black lines at the edge of your carpets or you have any sort of dust, excess dust in your home that you're dealing with and that's a problem for you, then you definitely would want your air ducts cleaned. But most people understand, too, that if they'll just look down the return, take the filter out a little bit and look down the return, they'll see all the dust that they're breathing on an everyday basis. The way we do the cleaning, most residential homes will be good for five to seven years. We do recommend that you have your system serviced by a licensed contractor and also use a good filter. We've been doing this for over 17 years now. We take pride in the fact that we have an A-plus rating at the Better Business Bureau. Also the fact that we don't believe that anybody's going to out-clean us. And as I've said before, people can outprice me, but they're not going to out-clean me. There's only one way, and that's the right way, and that's what we do at Mr. B's Air Duct Cleaning. 
hands on a very cold morning here in the mid south Have you ever started your day scraping ice off your windshield? Then drove home from work through a thunderstorm with pouring rain. We will have some pretty good showers. Changing weather can change your day fast. Good soaking rain. And keeping you safe is all that matters. Bring more rain. Trust the Storm 5 meteorologist to keep you ahead of changing weather. Of our weekend weather storm system. 5 weather. There's no safer place in a storm. Inside Politics on News Channel 5 Plus, a show where decision makers from Nashville... We're moving very aggressively on this. I don't think this is something that we can wait on. ...all the way to our nation's capital aren't afraid to speak up. Could have been chaos in the House of Representatives. Each week, host Pat Nolan sits down for exclusive interviews with some of the most influential players in politics. That may be the issue. Inside Politics, Friday nights at 7 on News Channel 5 Plus and at these encore times. Welcome back to Medical Monday. I'm here with Dr. Dan Wonder, an interventional radiologist. We're talking about kyphoplasty today, which deals with de back pain and back fractures in really an interesting way to um, solve them, so to speak, or cure them, so to speak. And um, we were talking about during the break that sometimes this can be an uphill battle to get insurance companies to cover it, sometimes. But time is of the essence with this. You can't do eight other methods and wait and say, hopefully it'll get better. You need to do this at the get-go. That that is how you preserve the most anatomic structure to the spine and curvature to the spine is the sooner that you can get to a fractured bone before again it changes that critical square shape to a triangle you know then you you, you do so much for the patient mm -hmm. because you help maintain their proper posture which helps prevent additional fractures because the front part of our body weighs more than the back part of the top of our body um, and so if you if you change that that, that focus basically from leaning backward to leaning right, forward. Right, I start doing this all day. Then you're gonna just, if you have bad bones then, then just more weight on bad bones and it's mm -hmm. gonna potentially crack more bones. Just like I said, from the minimal things that elderly people do, you know. Um, so th that is very important. And I do wanna make clear, insurance does cover this. Yes. It's just a, a process and you don't wanna dilly dally. You don't want to say, I'll just sit at home and, and take some ibuprofen and this will get better. I'm just gonna tough it out. Yeah. You know, that's that's not the way to go about it. Yeah, that's true. I, and you know, I'll, there, most of the time when we, in order to, to take care of people, we have mm -hmm. to see them in the clinic and we have to evaluate them, review their imaging, order imaging if necessary physically examine them, document where they hurt, why they hurt, what happened, you know, are there any loss of strength, reflexes, neurogenic uh, abnormalities, pain that goes down the legs or not. All these things all have to be documented before we can, you know, get a pre-cert in order to get, you know, a procedure mm -hmm. paid for. So it's, it's... Which stuff you would want to do anyway yeah. because you want to make sure this is the issue. Yeah, you, wanna, you don't want to just do a procedure on someone. You want to do the right thing for yeah. the right reason on someone. So. Let's talk about the procedure. What leads up to it? Uh, for the patient, and then what comes after it for the patient? First, let's say the patient was going to be taken care of that day, so mm -hmm. it all let's do an all in one day kind of thing, which mm -hmm. can happen. It, and so you're in the office in an all in one situation for about four hours. You come in, and we do what I just described the evaluation and, and all that stuff. Uh, IV gets started, antibiotics, sedation. Um, we bring you into our room, our fluoroscopy procedure room document again you know where things you know, where it's fractured where the pain is more sedation occurs um, the patient's prepped and then as I described the hollow needles are placed after the backs numb very well uh, balloons go in lift up the bone some make space for the cement the bone cement goes in we take out uh, through the hollow tubes and we take out the hollow tubes and put a dressing on the back that procedure of doing the procedure the process length mm -hmm. about 15 minutes, 10 wow. to 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, and then the patient's on the table for a couple more minutes to let sure things harden nice and spade and where they're at. Roll them back onto the stretcher, back out to recovery for an hour, and then they're basically out the door. Uh, a lot of patients, we, as I, as I mentioned before, um, what we, we try to do is, um, is to start them on an anabolic bone agent. Um, What's which that? It helps build bone density. Okay. There's a lot of things that, uh, that people take to, for, for their mm -hmm. osteoporosis. Um, most of those help maintain the bone density you have. They're called biphosphonates. Um, but we, al we always, you know, unless there's a contraindication, we try to start people on a medicine that's basically, it's, it's hyperparathyroid, it's parathyroid hormone. 
it's from the parathyroid glands mm. concentrated and you do an injection once a day and you take calcium and vitamin D and it helps build your bone density yeah, you know, about 20% over the course of two years. So I, we try to get all of our people into that regimen just to prevent them from having another fracture. Now you have to have enough on board in order to, you know, it doesn't happen like yesterday. Right. It, it takes you know, a month or two to get, to start to build some density. So unfortunately we do see some patients back in that window period mm -hmm. where they haven't, you know, gotten enough bone density back to help prevent themselves from having another fracture. How active can you be after this kind of surgery? Are you kind of laid up for six to eight weeks? Or are you mm. back to normal? No, it, you're, it's, <clears throat> it, it, there's really no recovery period, quite wow. honestly. You're a little sore in the back. You're, gonna, you're here in the office for that hour, then you go home. You're still sedated a little bit, so you sleep that night. The next morning you get up, you're a little sore in the back from where the little hollow needles mm -hmm. went in. Um, and, and you know we tell them to put some ice on that if they, if they need. The next day, they're up moving around a lot better than they were. In fact, most of them, if, like I had a lady today I did, I called her before I came to the office and she was already feeling tons better up, walked wow. around answering the phone before she couldn't. So it's that quick. I mean, we, you know, they can't drive for a day. I don't mm -hmm. want them doing heavy lifting for two or three days. And then just be very mindful of, you know, they have a fragile back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not gonna get better in, in five minutes. Sure. It's gonna, there's still potential for other risk and they have to be careful about that. Okay, let's jump to the lines. We have Keith waiting for us. Keith, thank you for calling in. What's your question tonight? Yes, I have a question. Uh, I had surgery uh, a while back, I'd say about five years ago, and uh, they had put a plate in my neck. Uh, now, now my doctor, a different doctor, has said that the plate has moved uh, away, like micro vibrations, has caused my bones not to heal. I was, and the the doctor also said the way to fix it would be to go through the back and put another plate and i'm worried about that because that's my muscle area and they went through my throat the first time it would this be something for a neck mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna put you on hold to so listen to your tv it sounds like a completely different scenario going on, but you're the doctor. Yeah, it is. I mean, that, I mean, he has a surgical, he has a surgical lesion. I mean, you know, hardware. So, I mean, that's what that mm -hmm. is, is loose or supposedly loose, and he needs to be fortified with other hardware and other surgery. That's not anything that can be done with needles and pills and little injections. That's a that's a surgery. That I mean, from what he's saying, mm -hmm. needs to be done. So, okay. I mean, very good. All right. Sounds like you need to keep talking to your doctor about that one. Um, what are the risks of kyphoplasty? What do people need to know going in? Um, well, it's a percutaneous procedure, which means we go through the skin. So there's risk of bleeding. There's risk of infection. You know, if you're on blood thinners, we need to make sure you stop them. You can't have a, a bladder infection or a pneumonia when we do it. Mm -hmm. We don't want that cement to get infected. Um, so those are the big risk. Um, there's something that we mentioned called inadvertent embolization. Embolization means that cement that we put in that bone comes out of the bone. There are veins coming out of the bone because mm -hmm. that makes blood. Um, and it, that's why we do it under fluoroscopy and under x-ray guidance and we use thick cement. So that if it starts to move or we don't want it to go, we stop and we let it harden and then we can put some more in it and it'll flow a different way. So that's a risk. It's pretty rare, but it's a, you, know, you can have a problem with that. Um, and it's really rare to have any kind of neurologic you know, injury, like nerve root injury. Mm -hmm. Paralysis is almost unheard of, but possible. Um, the, the way the bone is made in the back, you, you put the needles from the, th through the muscle, through more bone, into the front of the bone. Spinal cord sits in the nerve roots, sit in the middle, and you go off to the sides of it. So you're not going through where the spinal cord is at. Okay. That's not what you're doing. Is this a new sort of thing? Has this been happening for a long time? And we're just um, talking about it tonight. Kyphoplasty is a modification of a procedure called vertebroplasty. Vertebroplasty was invented a, some in 1980s, I think, in France, where they put the needles in a bone where there was tumor and they filled it up with bone cement, the mm -hmm. same kind of stuff. Um, and then so that kind of caught on as a way to treat fractures and even potentially cancer, you can treat cancer with this too, and it's not cure cancer, but the fractures mm -hmm. from cancer. Um, so they had some problems with vertebroplasty though, Mo mainly is that there's not much space for the, for the cement because there's a fracture, but you don't, 
create a cavity with like the balloon we did. Mm -hmm. So you have to put in thinner cement. So it had a propensity to get out of the bone easier. And so it's more risky. And then there were some controversial studies early on about really whether it was real efficacious or not, or whether it really did help mm -hmm. or not. So that kind of kind of shut things down on it a little bit. There's been some recent studies that actually show that that's not the case now. There's been a new study just came out this year that really showed that vertebroplasty, kyphoplasty is very beneficial to people. Um, anyway, so in the 19, I think in the 1990s, somewhere in the 1990s, the concept of the balloon was introduced into the process to make a space to try to lift the bone up. You know, we can't take a bone that's 50% crushed and make it normal. Mm -hmm. We can take a bone that's, you know, 50% crushed and make it, you know, 40% crushed if we're lucky. We're not going to get that height back, especially if that's been there for two months and now we're treating it. That's why it's better to get to it before it crushes down when it's still square to get in there what's fractured in the middle before the shell breaks. Right and get in there with the balloons and fill it up with cement to make it firm so that it doesn't lose its shape. But but you were saying it can take two weeks before you would see it on x-ray that it would collapse. So if you're saying that's a critical time, is it because somebody notices, I heard a pop, I had the severe pain, and someone like you says, yes, I know what this is. Yeah. I can tell you this, I mean, we have a good number of repeat customers, mm -hmm. uh, patients. Um, the first time it may take them eight to ten weeks to get to us through mm -hmm. the normal channels of being cared for. Mm -hmm. The second time it happens, <laughs> they call us the next day. Yeah, they know. And they want to bypass everything else, which, you know, we have to kind of put the brakes on them and mm -hmm. call the other docs that have sent the patient to us and know that's going on so they know what's, you know, they're all on the same page because we want to make sure that when we're taking care of patients for neurosurgeons, ortho surgeons, primary care docs, you know, that they're in the loop with what sure. we're doing with their patient because sometimes they want to I mean it's just common sense to say well this guy fixed my back it hurts again same mm -hmm. thing I think I'm gonna go back and see that guy well that's cool you know and it's nice but we, we want to make sure that you know we don't endanger any relationships really because they came to us from somebody so we we work really hard to keep everybody in the picture sure. and communicate which is what well, can only really help the difficult. patient in the long run yeah their doctor needs to know that you know something else is going to happen they're okay with it yeah. too. so absolutely okay we're going to take another quick break just a reminder if you have call or questions about kyphoplasty back pain go ahead and give us a call numbers on the screen i'll say it for you 615 737 plus or 7587. We're coming right back. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update. Sign up for Weather Call at newschannel5.com. A fairly mild start to our work week across the area. Clouds on the increase tonight, and it looks to be fairly active Tuesday and Wednesday. You'll want to keep an eye to the sky and one ear to News Channel 5 as we look to have a stormy start to this work week. Here's a look at temperatures across the southeast. We are warming, and we will continue to warm. On Tuesday, a warm front will lift north of us, and that will take temperatures back into the 70s. On Wednesday, a cold front slides through. That'll be our main catalyst for storms, and it will put an end to this warmth as we uh, look across the southeast. Here's a look at current conditions in Nashville right now. Overnight tonight, we drop down to 55. You'll see clouds on the increase, fairly calm during the overnight hours tonight. But by the morning hours, mid-morning hours, and afternoon of Tuesday, our storm chances will be on the increase. Expect scattered showers and storms on Tuesday, and a few could be strong, even a few severe are possible. Your best chance to see severe weather, though, will be Wednesday morning as a cold front swings through. It's Fat Tuesday on Ellen. Tomorrow is going to be known as 8 Advil for breakfast Wednesday. And we're letting the good times roll. Plus, Ellen's rain game. And David Spade. I want to hear about your accident. I wanted to reach out to you. I tweeted, but I... What happened? Thank you for uh, almost calling me. Um... <laughs> Tomorrow at 3 on News Channel 5. Tonight on News Channel 5 at 10. Holly Bobo went missing years ago. Now we've never been closer to getting an answer to the question, who killed Holly Bobo? With the murder trial drawing close, News Channel 5's Nick Barris digs through exclusive details of the case. Does the state have enough evidence to convict Zach Adams of murdering Holly Bobo? Tonight on News Channel 5 at 10.
Welcome back to Medical Monday. If you're just joining us tonight, we're talking about kyphoplasty with Dr. Dan Wonder. He's an interventionalist radiologist. We're going to talk about more what that is just a little bit later on. But if kyphoplasty is a foreign word to you, let's explain. Let's backtrack a little bit if people are just joining us. And, and tell me what it is. It, kyphoplasty is a minimally invasive way utilizing no big surgeries, mm -hmm. equipment, you know, two tiny little incisions and needles with balloons through them to put bone cement into a fractured bone in your back to make it quit hurting. I mean, really. Um, you're gluing the broken pieces together with same cement that they use to put in hips and knees um, so that the pain goes away. Because the pain is from, is from the movement. Mm -hmm. And I like to tell patients, imagine if you had broke your arm and you didn't put a cast on it, it just flopped around. It hurt right. like crazy. Yeah. So putting a cast on it immobilizes it, but also lets it heal, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know it's hard to immobilize the whole body. Right. And we have, I mean, we have some very fancy braces that we can get up, put on people, um, so that they don't move and they walk around like a robot. <laughs> but they're kind of like exercise machines. You know, after about a week or so, they're in the corner and the laundry's uh -huh, piled on uh -huh. them um, because there's people don't like to. It's I mean, just not practical. It's not practical. No. So for life. especially when you can fix fix it in inside of half a day. You know, well, I mean skin to skin and out of the office and ride home so yeah it is pretty amazing but time is of the essence with this procedure you have to find it it's better to find it sooner rather than later yeah it's 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 just a good thing to have you know whether it's a primary care doc or a mm -hmm. patient either one and, and I say primary care docs because they see so many yes. things and it's hard you know it's hard to keep all these things straight I think because I, I have a hard time doing it but if a patient or a, you know a patient or a person has Focal back pain, just like someone stuck a knife in your back, and every time you twist or move or bend, it just hurts really bad. I mean, I'm like eight out of ten pain. Chances are, in the right you know demographic, you, you have a fracture, and it um, won't always show up right away on the X-ray. Correct. Because that can be extremely frustrating for a patient to know they are in this kind of pain, but for an X-ray to show nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I mean, and, and they're. And they're like, they'll, they'll go almost like start to doctor shop. It's like, well, yeah, because then you feel like you're just wrong. trying to, you know, get pills from somebody yeah. and you don't want to be seen as that. But if you're in pain, you're in pain. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's very debilitating pain. It's I'm sure amazing. you've heard every story underneath the oh, sun. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, people being driven to the office for the procedure and every bump in the road they can oh, feel. I can imagine. And they're getting yeah. after their driver about going. <laughs> and on the way home, they have nothing they're to fine. say because they don't hurt at all on the way home. It's just like, like that. Is there any greater risk to the vertebrae around the one that's fractured because of this operation or does it help those other vertebrae or is there no consequence? The operation itself doesn't help the vertebral other vertebral mm -hmm. bodies. There has been argument over the years, <coughs> excuse me, this is this is one of those hotly debated areas of kyphoplasty, vertebroplasty is that you go and you fix a, a broken bone and you mm -hmm. put that methyl methacrylate, which is the bone cement in right. there, and you make it really hard. Well, the other ones that are osteoporotic around it now are weaker, so you're going to crush those. Well, studies have been done, and that's not the case. The other vertebral bodies don't break with any greater frequency than someone who doesn't get one fixed. So if you have a fracture and you don't get it fixed, you're going to fracture the ones mm -hmm. above it and below it because of your disease process, not because of the fact that one's been fixed. You know, it's not, and that's, that's not to say that we don't fix other levels in people. You know, I fixed a lady w uh, one day that had, she came in to see, the first time she came to see me in consult, she had one fracture. And while we were working on getting it pre-approved for insurance, um, she called and she said, I did something, my back hurts again, can you see me? We hadn't even got the first one fixed. And she came back in to see us and we, you know, we, we evaluated her, we put her under x-ray and looked at her. She broke two more, the two above it. Really? Yes. Not doing anything, not jumping out, you know, bungee jumping, right. parachuting, nothing like that, no riding horses. I mean, it just happened. And so, and then we're kind of limited on how many we can fix. That's a bad part at a time. So mm -hmm. we had to stage her and fix her in different times. But And you said this is often linked to osteoporosis, so a lot of it is seen in white, older women. That's your normal patient for this. For the most part, yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's true. There's, there's some, some men... Um, and we do see some people that, you know, have fractures for like the gentleman, the first caller mm -hmm. had a traumatic ep episode where car accident mm -hmm. or things like that. Those, those, are, those are also very painful and they can be fixed the same way. 
Um, insurance is a little bit tougher to deal with on those because it's why? not well because it's not osteoporotic. Ah, okay. That's why. Um, they the, would rather see the person in a brace, which is less yeah. expensive. Blah 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 blah. The um, the other thing is that uh, bears mentioning is of fractures from metastatic disease, cancer that gets mm -hmm. into bones. Um, and we have the, um, one of our sites, we actually have the ability to not only perform the kyphoplasty, but actually also treat the tumor that's in that bone by the special electrodes that will cook that tumor, and then you can actually in, you know, encase it and, and put the cement in there to get the fracture wow. you know, pain to go away. Now, that helps treat the tumor, but you know, the pain is from the fracture, so mm -hmm. you don't actually have to treat the tumor in order to do it. Just treating the bone that's fractured is usually sufficient, but we have that ability too at one of our sites. We have multiple sites where we can, in our outpatient uh, system, where we can do kyphoplasties. We have several points of access um, uh, where I'm at and then at another site downtown. Um, and of course, we do a lot of these at the hospital because mm -hmm. sometimes people come in, you know, in the emergency room um, yeah. and they present after hours or they didn't know what to do, so they come in through the ER. So we, you know, we, we do we do those procedures at hospitals too, because you know, inter people know may think they, they probably see more radiologists in a hospital sure. than they do outside the hospital. Although um, it's just because of the, of the nature of our specialty mm -hmm. and people not being aware, but. Um, they can actually just come see us in the clinic too. They can make an appointment, a consult, see us with a variety of problems that they may have um, that are all listed on our website mm -hmm. from PAD to kyphoplasty broken backs and neurogenic pain in the legs and you know needs for biopsies and ports for cancer and all kinds of stuff that we do. Wow, okay. So. We'll get into that in a little bit. Let's talk to Tina. Tina, thank you for calling in tonight. What's your question? Um, hi, yes. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, my grandmother um, has osteoporosis and she has been diagnosed. I think she has a back fracture. That's what they've told us. And I, I'm not sure if she would be a candidate for this um, with her age and condition. Um, so it was just wanting to know if, if she would, would be a good candidate or not. Um. I would pro I would say probably yes, and I don't mean to sound overly you know optimistic, but our patients you know we've had patients we treated from probably 45 up to 104. You're kidding? No, wow. 104 in 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 our office setting. This is without general anesthesia. This is with IV sedation, close close um, you know physiologic nursing monitoring um, to make sure that they're fine. And you really don't have to. It's kind of amazing. You would think putting big needles in someone's back would require a lot of anesthesia, mm -hmm. but in, especially in some of the el elderly patients, minimal, minimal anesthesia, lots of local numbing lidocaine kind mm -hmm. of medicine in the skin, and you can get this done in a short period of time very, very safely. Wow. Um, so I'm not sure of her particular circumstances, mm -hmm. but, you know, it it's highly possible, I would say. So Tina, it sounds like a call may be worth the while, maybe help your grandmother out. Absolutely. Tian, thank you for calling in tonight. Good to talk to you. Yeah, thanks so much. All right. It, you know, it is when you talk about surgeries, usually people are saying the older you get, you might you not want to do this. But it, so it's encouraging to hear that that even if you are older, you could be out of pain. Yes. I mean, you know, I mean, and, and not it's not only older, but it's some people even that are terminal, too, mm -hmm. that have cancers. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you may know that they're not going to live a long time, mm -hmm. but uh, in order to take away their pain so that that time they have is more enjoyable is very important. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, we, we just, kid gloves take really good close care of them. I mean, we don't, we don't run 15 patients through the office in a day. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, we have a smaller number, lots of close care, lots of, you know, TLC, and uh, we take good care of them and they, and they appreciate it when they leave. So. Oh, I'm sure, because you were saying that the results of this surgery are really felt pretty immediately. Oh, yes, ma'am, yeah, like right away. So they, they can be up and walking out of your office maybe when they are hobbling in. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. It's, it's you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost you know, like one of those healing services yeah. that, you, <laughs> that you see on TV. How and long have you been doing this? been doing about five years. Mm -hmm. The procedure's been around longer, but mm -hmm. because of opportunities that presented themselves, it seemed like the right fit at the right time to introduce it into our center, and it's been wildly successful. And you said that the pain that associated with a back fracture 
is very unique. So when someone comes and says, I have this kind of pain, what do they describe? And very typically, a patient, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty much a focal, mm -hmm. midline back pain, very intense. Usually, almost always made worse if they go from a lying position mm -hmm. to sitting, because they flex their back, mm -hmm. and, or from sitting to standing. Um, any twisting moving, any bending moving um, is very typical. A lot of times, at the level of the fracture, the patients will have pain that kind of wraps around the, the abdomen or the chest. In that area, sometimes just one sided, sometimes both. But that's very, that's what's, what's going on there is it's the body is trying to brace itself using its muscles mm. so that the back doesn't move. That makes so sense. all your muscles are locking up, trying to acting like a brace. Yeah. Um, and then what happens is they start to go into spasm. So they have this bad <laughs> oh. pain that's really bad in their muscles too, which is why we give them muscle relaxant, mm -hmm. which helps. And that goes away pretty quickly after you fix the back, but that's real typical right there. Wow, okay. When we come back, we're gonna talk about some of the other procedures that Dr. Wonder does right there in his office. So stick around for that. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. As a mother, you don't want to have to worry about this bill is coming, but then she needs this chemo. That's a decision you shouldn't have to make. El que San Jun no cobra ni un centavo para nosotros significa quitarnos todo ese estrés, esa preocupación y podernos enfocar en nuestra hija. That was the first thing I was like, how are we going to do this? When St. Jude told us that we didn't have to pay a single bill, I was like, wow. They pretty much have saved us. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders, and now your focus is supporting this child. There is not another hospital like St. Jude. The patient care is unmatchable. It saved my life. It saved my daughter's life. It saved our family. rising and the push and pull of progress reliable information keeps you connected safe alert trust is everything the news channel 5 network runs toward the future eager to tell it all hold the powerful accountable and keep a watchful eye over everything you hold dear thank you for trusting the news channel 5 network to be your news and information leader Welcome back to Medical Monday. We're sure glad you're joining us today. I have Dr. Dan Wonder here with me uh, talking about kyphoplasty today. And before this hour started, I thought, what in the world is that? What a neat procedure that can really help a lot of folks. Because so many people are dealing with back pain, all kinds of different back pain. And for something that can help so immediately, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now, we talked about the, the very significant way you can tell that you have a back fracture. For other kinds of back pain, what do you hear in the office? People come in complaining about what? A lot of people come in complaining they have back pain also, but it's more dull kind mm -hmm. of um, pain that may like go down the leg, 
you know, mm -hmm. down the back of the leg, then the side of the leg, and the front of the leg. Same thing can happen to the neck, to the shoulders and stuff. So, um, you know, it's with regard to the back and these kind of fractures, um, it's really important. That's one of the things we do on the front end is sort out whether they have a fracture or if they have like bad disc and pinched mm -hmm. nerves um, because those will they'll present two different ways, um, but they can present together too. So it's not uncommon that we actually see somebody that's got long standing, you know, back pain going down the back of the right leg, but then they develop this sharp pain at a different level. So in those kind of, we, you know. We you would have two problems all in one. Two problems in yeah. one. And unfortunately you can't fix them the same day. Mm -mm. So you, you know, you fix the worst one first, which is usually the fracture, because you want to get to that as quick as you can to save the height. And then you, then you can bring them back in a couple of weeks and make sure they're doing better. And then you can talk to them about, you know, let's say epidurals or nerve root blocks, things like that to help kind of calm down the other areas that are causing them symptoms. Um, and if they, of course, if they haven't been imaged in those areas, you want to direct that mm -hmm. either by your, you know, uh, we'll do it in the office or we have work with the PCPs or whoever that may need to to get the right area imaged. But um, those are two important things to, to sort out. So. Yeah, but we see a lot of what you would call neurogenic pain um, and do a lot of injections, a lot of epidurals and nerve blocks and SI joint injections. We do a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm always fascinated. I think I asked you this question last time, but it, as a woman, when I hear epidural, I think having a baby, I'm not going to feel anything from you know, the waist down. That's not the kind of back epidural, right? No, that's not the kind that we give. No, that, that kind of epidural involves a needle they put in and they take out the needle but before they take it out they put a catheter in mm -hmm. so they can kind of continue to give you medications to make you you know your mm -hmm. legs numb and everything Th what we do in the office is you know we use a tiny smaller needle and we do an injection after we numb the skin um, to actually numb at a level of the spine or a nurse uh, isolated nerve that may be bothering you we figure all that out of course and, and then take the needle out and then you're on your way um, Careful, you know, we have to be careful as if we do a nerve block sometimes, you have to be careful about how you can walk and you sure. have to have a driver. But it's, it's, so it's a whole different kind of concept. People, mm -hmm. a lot of people think that because they yeah. come in and they're thinking, I had epidural before, but it's, it's a whole different thing. And, you know, it's just like anything else, if, you know, somebody's never had anything done, there's a lot of apprehension on the front end mm -hmm. and the extra TLC and hand holding and explaining what's going to happen and then almost uniformly it's like that's all it's done you know I mean didn't even feel anything and there in the steroid the, the, you put the steroid in and there's some numbing medicine and it kicks in and they feel for quite a bit better everyone always likes to know how long is this gonna last exactly how long can I feel this good <laughs> my, my standard answer is if I knew that I would have played the lottery and I wouldn't be here because <laughs> you just don't know everybody's different everyone's got it you know their back pain is different components some of it's arthritis some of it's a pinched nerve and you're helping all of that with the steroid injection um, but you know everybody responds to medications differently uh, everybody has a different degree of the severity of their disease mm -hmm. so you know there's no there's no good answer you you know you it's hope a, we'll it's, see yeah it's a we'll see and then and typically with steroid injections we can give three every six months like I think some of the other docs have talked about mm -hmm. on the show um, and that's that's you know mandated for several reasons, but it's you know you don't want to give too much steroid to mm -hmm. people because it can weaken bones. Right, and then you're you dealing know, with fractures. Yeah, so, um, but but um, it is very helpful to a lot of people. You also treat something called PAD. Can you explain what that is? PAD is uh, peripheral arterial disease. Um, there's a lot of words for it. Some called peripheral arterial disease, atherosclerosis. Um, and what that is is that's you know plaque buildup in the arteries, mm -hmm. and typically an interventional radiologist um, we we work on the legs and the arms, pretty much everything but the heart. We don't, and we work on the arteries that go to the brain too. But that's all these places plaque can form kidney arteries, all those places, and they narrow down the arteries. The plaque does, and then we have to open it up, and we have different tools in our toolbox to do that. We have balloons, we have stents. And the balloons basically go in and stretch the artery open, and then you take the balloon out. You don't leave anything there. The stents, you go in and you put the stent in, and it open it up. It holds it. And it holds it like yeah. the shaft, the, the pillars in mm -hmm. a mine shaft that trusses. So they stay there. Um, and then we have another tool called an atherectomy catheter. And there's different kinds. There's rotational, laser, directional. Um, 
And what they can do, they basically remove plaque. And mm. they work, work in different ways to do that, but they're taking the plaque out of the artery. Um, some are more efficient than others, arguably so by different people. Have, you know, some people sure. use this device or that device, but um, they actually you know, remove the plaque. They carve it out of the artery. So when you carve it out and take it out of the artery, then the artery is more open. And if you don't leave anything behind, you have less of a chance of having potential um, overabundant healing response. Because the artery, just like when a surgeon operates on it or when we open it up mm -hmm. somehow, there's going to be a healing process, just like when you cut yourself, and there's sure. going to be scar formation. Smaller the artery, the more, you know, if you take an artery this you big, take it that big, it's going to narrow down some after you've done your treatment. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, got to monitor patients and follow them because you may need to retreat them. And there's new devices out there that are pretty cool. We have some balloons that actually have a chemotherapy agent on them. So when you go in the artery with them after you've usually removed the plaque and inflate the balloon you put that chemotherapy agent into the wall of the artery okay and what that does is just like what chemotherapy does it inhibits cell growth mm. okay so that scarring response is markedly inhibited so it doesn't scar down like it stays That's open interesting. better okay. so very interesting yeah they're pretty neat they're spendy but they're neat little balloons so they look <laughs> pretty good and, and the PAD it, again it goes back to back pain but it's a completely different kind of back pain than you would see with a back fracture yeah the, the PAD kind of folds into that because you know when people come in with back pain they can have you know that that you know, back pain or leg pain they, they the, the leg pain can be from the back you know, from mm -hmm. the pinched nerve, not so much a back fracture, it shouldn't go down the legs, but, but you have to sort out between the pinched nerves and the blocked arteries sometimes. Sometimes it's pretty apparent, sometimes it's not. And so a lot of times it goes together, just like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We're talking about mostly dealing with patients that are 65 to 95. So unfortunately, as we get older, things start to wear out, sure. they don't work as well. And, but it's not normal just to think that I'm older or it doesn't I've work anymore. Yeah. You, need, you should seek some attention mm -hmm. for it. Maybe we can make it better. There's no sense suffering through those years when we can pretty easily make you know make things better for you. Absolutely. Okay, I think I'm gonna go to the right person. I'm looking for Jane. Hopefully I'm pressing the right number here. Jane, are you with me? Hello. Hi, go ahead with your question. Hi, uh, so my husband has some back pain, um, but I was kind of wondering if um, he needs to have the x-ray done before he sees Dr. Wonder, mm -hmm. or if that's something they can do in their office to show that he does have a compression fracture. Okay, great question. Yes, we, we do, and we, our, my off, the office in Madison, where I'm at mm -hmm. Premier Radiology Briarville, as well as our other site that we have down at Bell Mead, we have full imaging capabilities. We have x-ray, we have CT, we have MRI, and at one of our sites we even have nuclear medicine. So no, they don't need to have it to come to see us. It's it, you know if it, it's helpful if they do, so we kind of can focus in on their problem. But if it you know if it's if we just need to see him in consultation, talk to him, and and you know figure out the pieces of the puzzle, that's what we do too. I mean we see patients just you know straight yeah. up. So okay, well there you go, Jane. Thank you for calling in. And, and that is nice. I mean, just from a patient perspective, being able to go to a doctor and it, and it be one-stop shopping for all those tests and not like, well, go here, have this test, and I'll see you back in a week or two when I can fit you in the schedule, and then you may have to go do this. So that is nice. Yeah. It is nice. It, uh, um, it's, I mean, it, it just makes caring for that patient just more of a you know, uniform, complete experience because everything's there, all of the images Mm -hmm. Not only images from all the premier, all the 14 premier radiology centers are there, but also the St. Thomas, all the St. Thomas uh, images are there. Uh -huh. It's all in one picture archival and communication system. So if a patient went to the ER at St. Thomas West with back pain and had a fracture, and then the ER doc wanted to send them to see me, I could see Things everything that was up. done at St. Thomas when they showed up in my office. I could see all of that. You You're know? not having to backtrack and do it or all again. Send for, you know, you know get yeah. fax requests for images and mm -hmm. reports because it's all in the system already. Good point. All right, we're going to take another quick break. We are coming right back after this. Stay with us. This is a Storm 5 HD weather update. Sign up for WeatherCall at NewsChannel5.com.
A fairly mild start to our work week across the area. Clouds on the increase tonight, and it looks to be fairly active Tuesday and Wednesday. You'll want to keep an eye to the sky and one ear to News Channel 5 as we look to have a stormy start to this work week. Here's a look at temperatures across the southeast. We are warming, and we will continue to warm. On Tuesday, a warm front will lift north of us, and that will take temperatures back into the 70s. On Wednesday, a cold front slides through. That'll be our main catalyst for storms, and it will put an end to this warmth as we uh, look across the southeast. Here's a look at current conditions in Nashville right now. Overnight tonight, we drop down to 55. You'll see clouds on the increase, fairly calm during the overnight hours tonight. But by the morning hours, mid-morning hours, and afternoon of Tuesday, our storm chances will be on the increase. Expect scattered showers and storms on Tuesday, and a few could be strong, even a few severe are possible. Your best chance to see severe weather, though, will be Wednesday morning as a cold front swings through. Dr. Sean Pruitt has spent his career in medicine dispensing expert advice and helping patients get on the road to recovery. Now Dr. Pruitt is here to help you. Introducing Pharmacist on Call on News Channel 5 Plus. Staying healthy is on everyone's mind. Don't miss your chance to get free advice. Watch Pharmacist on Call with Dr. Sean Pruitt. The first Thursday of every month at 7 p.m. on News Channel 5 Plus. Warning. If you have an IBC filter for blood clots, you may be entitled to money damages. These filters can malfunction, perforate internal organs, or cause deadly side effects. If you have an IBC filter, call immediately. Bart Durham Injury Law. You deserve to be paid for what you've gone through. For joining us for Medical Monday with Dr. Dan Wonder, an interventional radiologist, and that means you don't just read the x-rays. That's right. Uh, interventional radiologist is trained to read x-rays. That's where we start. Mm -hmm. But then we take it a step further, and we're clinical. We treat people based on those x-rays and using those x-rays and those tools, as well as other with other surgical kind of tools, we actually fix things that are broken, like backs, inject nerves, fix broken arteries that are blocked, fix an aortic aneurysms, you know, stent arteries that are narrowed, all that kind of stuff, biopsy, tumors, we do all that kind of stuff with that x-ray guidance, which we're trained with. So that's what Very makes cool. us kind of special. All right, Dr. Dan Wonder, thank you for joining us. If you want to find out more, there are the numbers to call or go online to advancedhealthmedicalmondays.com. Have a great week, folks.